Welcome to Behind the Lens. This is an ongoing conversation about all things film connected happening in Eugene, Oregon. My guests are Marv Leek and Mike Anderson. Hi, guys. Hello, Tom. Hi, Tom. And today we're going to talk about a uh, short film that you guys made together, and it's called Roger Roger. Is that correct? Yes. Um, this is a project of uh, a local film group called Glow in the Dark. Uh, in cooperation with a local theater group called No Shame Theater, where uh, those of us who were interested in the filmmaking thought, maybe we can just make a quick, easy, short film if we let No Shame come up with the script, cast it, bring us the actors, be ready to do all of that, and we'll take care of the photography. We just need location. So we came up with this idea that it was going to be um, under a hundred dollar budget, shoot it in a total of eight hours, and use inexpensive uh, prosumer cameras and knock out a film. So what we're going to show today is the result of that effort, which did fail in a couple of places. But for the most part, we, we achieved it. We got yeah. a, uh, a nice little film out of this. Yeah, and what was the staffing uh, arrangement here? Well, I, I was uh, uh, directing and uh, Mike was uh, producing, and and uh, so we had uh, we had several people that were working, and you can talk about them, Mike, if you want to. Uh, Les Anderson, uh, 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 Jack Anderson, uh, photographer. Les Garwood also a photographer. Uh, we used the residence of Les Garwood and his wife Annie as as the set, so we really imposed upon those two, yes. and. Uh, uh, let's see, we had um, Annie also working as script supervision, and uh, uh, we uh, had uh, Ivana. Ivana? Yes. And, uh, well, it'll show the credits in the end, all the yes. people, but we had a total of maybe six or seven people, is all it took, and a couple of pizzas, and uh, yeah, we, we made it under $100. We did. So. So it, it, it's, you said there are some failures within it, but uh, overall the project was successful. Yes, I, I think but the failure was I didn't hit the time goals we wanted. It took much more time than we thought. It took five nights when, between Thanksgiving and Christmas to get this done. And we had um, uh, to take advantage of the fact that the very first night turned out to be cold and foggy. So we realized we had to shoot the ending first. And that tumbled through the whole film where the actors were constantly rewinding from the end and trying to make all of our cuts match backwards. Because right. <laughs> uh, we shot the ending before the beginning. And well, don't give anything away because we're going to show the movie. Uh, Marv, do you have anything you'd like to say before we look at it? Well, I would say there was, there was one thing that I remembered very well, and that was there was a shot with, uh, where the, the, uh, an actor is coming out of the house and, uh, and uh, uh, my good friend and our cameraman on this thing, uh, Jack Anderson, did and this editor also. and editor also. He he uh, did this wonderful, no steady cam shot. It was handheld. He came out. He goes around, the, follows the actor around the car, gets the actor into the car, and then. In the movie, watch, you will never see the door frame. <laughs> <laughs> that camera is passed through the door so smoothly you don't even notice it. And it's From a, just a wonderful hand shot. To his right always, hand as the door yeah, is closing. It's, it's so. fantastic, and I, I always get thrilled when I see that. So. Well, maybe we ought to just take this moment now to watch the film, and then when it's over, we'll continue to talk about it. Okay. So let's go ahead and roll Roger Roger.
Stanley? Come on. Come on, open up. Roger. Wait, what are you doing here? You gotta help me. I really fucked up tonight. Come here. Take a deep breath. Is that what you would do? In my situation? Take a deep breath? That's exactly what I would do. Okay. Take your coat off. Want something to drink? Some wine? Oh yeah. Yeah. Chardonnay? You got any red? You know. Man, I can't think with this on. Now what happened tonight? Roger, what's the worst thing you've ever done? What? Why do you need to know that? That the whole time we've been friends, I can't think of a single bad thing you've ever told me. Can you tell me why you're here? Yeah. I had like this moment of clarity. You know? That Einstein quote? The thinking it took to get us into this mess is not the same thinking that will get us out of it. Now that's smart. It's like, I need a total rewire. I need to know exactly how you think. Okay, so explain what happened, and I'll give you some advice. No. No, you, you can't just hand me a printout this time. I need the whole program. I need to know how you make decisions, you know? How you end up with a life like this, to get this kind of life. Really? I've always wondered the same thing about you. About me? My life's a f train wreck. Yeah, but your life's exciting. I mean, here you are at two in the morning with another crazy Stanley story. Which probably involves a girl, right? It sure does. Hey, can we just do some hypothetical questions? You know, just to get this thing started? Okay, good. Okay, let's say that you really like this girl, okay? And she wants to have sex with you. What would you do? I would gladly have sex with her. Exactly. Right? Are you taking notes? Oh, yeah. I'm going to use this. Okay. Now, the same girl, let's say she has a boyfriend. Like, a serious boyfriend. What do you do? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Okay, but she still really wants to have sex. And she is hot. If it were me at this point, I'd probably have sex with her. Oh, great! That's great. We are on exactly the same page. Now, let's say this girl's tired. Tired? Does she still want to have sex? Well, I don't know. Maybe she's too tired to say. But she wanted to have sex before she fell asleep, right? So, what's the difference? <clears throat> but why would you choose to have sex with a sleeping person? Because that seems weird.
Hey, what did you do tonight? Hey, let's just keep let's just keep rolling, okay? Uh, would you shoot someone if they had a gun to your head? Probably. Okay. Uh, and, and what if they just had a gun in their coat? You know, but they're coming right at you, and you're pretty sure. Pretty sure they're going to shoot me? Well, pretty sure they have a gun. I wouldn't shoot someone for wearing a coat, if that's what you're asking. That's really insightful, but I kind of wish we'd talked earlier. Hey, what happened? Did you shoot someone? Look, I can't have you here. I'm just asking you questions. If you came to my place, would I do that to you? No, but I would tell you why I came. Oh, sure. But you won't tell me the worst thing you've ever done. That's different. No, it's not different. Look, if we're going to make this thinking thing work, we've got to get deep, deep stuff. Like stuff we've never talked about. Like, like here, what's the one thing you most fervently believe in? I believe you've lost your mind, fervently. Roger, I could die tonight. You aren't taking this shit seriously. You've got all these fucking barriers up. I can't believe you just hit me. You're crazy. Then help me be more like you. Smart and stable. Easy does it. No! Your whole idea is absurd. You can't become me just by asking these questions. Why not? Because they don't mean anything. A person is defined by actions, their choices. You can't just jot down some notes and expect to change your whole personality. Bullshit. There's shortcuts. Shortcuts? How many of your stories have I listened to? Hitchhiking through Appalachia, crashing weddings, threesomes, fivesomes, stealing cars. Joyriding. It's called joyriding. Whatever. I know all these stories about you. Even envy them sometimes, but you see this. Stamps, Stanley. It's Saturday night. And this is what I'm doing. Just knowing what you would do doesn't change how I act. Just like knowing you lost your virginity in a threesome at a full moon party had absolutely no impact on how I lost my virginity. How'd you lose your virginity? Oh, come on. There's no big story. I met some freshman at a party. We got drunk, OK? Did you feed her drinks, put on some pressure? I'm not. Is that mine? I thought you didn't like white. I thought I'd give it a try. You're freaking me out, okay? Look, I want to help you. But if you won't tell me what you did, you need to leave. Now! Look, I'll tell you everything you want to know if you just answer one question. Fine! What's the worst thing? Done. You're going to think it's stupid. It's not like anything you'd say. Well, see, that's why I need to hear it. Look, no notes, okay? It isn't anything I did. It's just disturbing. Go on. Get it over with. I saw this dog drown once. All this from Dogs can't drown. Yes, they can. OK, tell me. My friends and I were up at my folks' cabin on the lake. And this one couple brought their bulldog. This thing was annoying as hell loud, drooled all over the furniture. One afternoon, they left. And I let the dog out of the house, and I drowned. But you said you saw a dog drown. Yeah. So what happened? Did it just bang its head or something? There was this pier going down to the lake, and it must have fallen off, because it was paddling, 
and it was trying to hop back on, but it couldn't. So it just kept trying and trying. And, and what? What? It drowned, that's what I said. Was it fast? About half an hour. Half an hour? What were you doing? I was like you. I thought dogs could swim. Yeah, but you could obviously see it couldn't swim. So what? So you didn't see a dog drown. You watched it drown. Why the fuck are you attacking me? I told you what you wanted to hear. Now talk. Hey, I need a second. For what? This changes my whole approach. It doesn't change the kind of person I am, okay? It's just one thing that happened. Yeah, but you said a person is defined by their actions. So I'm the bad guy here? Maybe I should be more like you, a thief, a murderer. Yeah, okay, fine. Let's do a little role play. I'll be you, you be me. I don't think so. Can't. It's not like you. No. Stanley. I'm Roger, quietly working with my stamp collection. When suddenly, there's a knock at the door. What a surprise! Who could it be? Take this, Stanley. You're dead. coat. Pretty sure. Police will be here soon. I just shot someone. I just killed someone. You gotta help me. You've been through this before, right? What do I do now? If I were you, I'd run. Run? Just leave the house? Oh no, you'll need a disguise. I need my wallet. Keys. No time. My wallet's in the coat. It's yours. And you'll need a car. Not your car. I take that one. Okay, thanks. And this will work? It's the best thing I can think of. Tom, I just want to say, this was so much fun. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> the, the reason we did this was out of camaraderie, friendship, and we all liked our cameras. We liked, we want to make films. We've been involved in other filmmaking. We go, we can do our own. This time we're going to do this. And it was for fun. And we had a lot of fun. That, yeah. and, and that was... Everybody chipped in and everybody did everybody else's job and it was really, uh, That's it, right. was a, it was a great time. It was a, it was a cooperative, collaborative effort. <coughs> we said nobody is going to just have a title and do one thing. Everybody needs to help with everything. And uh, like, for example, uh, Annie Garwood not only had to clean up after us in this house, her house and all this stuff, she made us pizza, she did all the script supervision, I mean, she... I mean, they put That's their right. lives for a, a month into, into making this film. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I also want to be sure and give a, a good shout out to uh, uh, Jeff Geiger uh, and Bradley, right. the, the folks who played. Uh, Jeff, Jeff was Stanley in the beginning, Roger in the end, and Bradley was Roger in the beginning, Stanley at the end. And we had this little crossover that uh, our psychiatrist friend, Les Garwood, had uh, devised in, right. into the characters. And. Uh, uh, Jeff Geiger uh, had originally written this as a 10-minute short play for the Northwest 10 competition here at uh, Oregon Contemporary Theater in Eugene. And so we just took that story that he had and adapted it to that physical location and said, well. And we were rewriting right up to the last minute oh, before this we were amazing. shooting too. Because <laughs> Jeff was the original <laughs> writer and we wanted him participating yes. all, all along. Yeah. He would send me an updated script at two or three in the afternoon. I'm going through trying to get our blocking and figure out what we're gonna do with the cameras and all this stuff. And Jeff walks in with a whole new script. Mm. At, when he walks in, as we're ready to start shooting, he's changed lines here and there. And so Jeff, Jeff um, really is responsible for the dialogue. That's, that, that was Jeff's. Um, my part in the writing was, well, how are we gonna film this? This <coughs> little choreography, this dance that's going on as these two are going at each other. And uh, so I actually approached it that way. Um, trying to imagine how a choreographer would have a dance going around because they were, well, there's like a, you know, that little hassock couch thing and they literally go around it one and a half times. We call that lap dance. As they're circling mm -hmm. each other around this and uh, then there's that scene they do at the door and then back to the stamp table and so the choreography had, had become kind of um, an ongoing thing and again, shooting in reverse we shot the end of the film, and then we exactly, had to just yeah. keep matching and going backwards. So, <laughs> we were very lucky. We were very lucky with the high ceilings in uh, in the the house that we used for the location because we were able to limit our camera moves and our lighting moves so that we could keep filming very quickly. And so we had lights overhead and mics overhead, and it worked out pretty pretty quickly as far as uh, than a normal shoot. Yeah, yeah. This, it was we, everything was designed for speed. With our stated goal going into this, that we were going to try and shoot this in a weekend, we didn't have time for multiple scenes outside of that the one set. But we did, uh, like I said, that first night we had the beauty and surprise of the uh, of the fog. So we went that opening shot with Stanley running in the fog. That was invented that that night. And um, by the way, this film did show on the big screen in the Shaggy Dog Showcase at Valley River at the Regal mm -hmm. Cinema, uh, along with Eugene International Film Festival in uh, the fall of, I believe it was 2013? 2013, When we, when we showed yeah. this. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it was fun to have this, the work that you've done uh, now up on a big screen for everybody to see. And Mike talked me into doing the stunt for this, oh, which was the, <laughs> go ahead, Mike. Marv, of course, is the bad guy, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> he had to take the fall. We had to take that shot over and over and over, and he kept falling and had to hit on his knees and land in a particular spot. I, I, I bet we had 20-some-odd takes of yeah. Marv the camera, dying. The cameraman so. would be giggling and going, do it again, <laughs> do it again. <laughs> well, on that note, I, I think we have to start to say goodbye that uh, we've enjoyed having you both here. I'm sure you both enjoyed making this movie. And, we had a lot of fun. And, you yeah. know, I hope that we have a chance to see another one from you. Yes, and uh, I'm continuing to work with the Shaggy Dog Group. We'll have some more short films. We've got about nine in the can now. And uh, Marv is continuing actually being paid to work on paid crews. So. Yeah. And there we have it. So thank you, and we're out. <laughs> <laughs>
Thanks, Tom.